Hi everyone, welcome to Hewitt Home. I'm Tracy Koga. Do you have a good story to tell? Have you ever thought about writing it down? Well, look no further because I'm going to have three special guests on our show today that will share their secrets and tips on how to write a good story. So don't go away. This is all coming up on Hue at Home. All right, folks, maybe you should get out your pen and paper and perhaps you too can become the next author of a bestseller or whatever because everybody loves to read and why not write? And so writing is, again, the topic of our conversation on Hewitt Home. And I have three incredible guests that will share their stories and also their passion for writing. So I have Marjorie Anderson, I've got Lynn Lukusiak, and I've got Trevor Martins. And Lynn and Trevor, you're going to join us in the second half of all of this. But I want you still here because Marjorie has spent so much time with you, I know, both of you, and, and honing your skills as a writer. So. Marjorie, I guess let's start with you and give us a little bit of a background on your creative writing experience and literature as a whole. Okay. Um, I grew up in a storytelling family. My background is um, Icelandic people and they love to tell stories. And my father used to tell us stories at night. I have seven siblings and we'd gather around the bed and he'd lie on his bed and and tell us these stories. So storytelling has been a part of my life. And I think it was the experience with my father that caused me to love reading about stories, telling stories, and writing stories, I guess. So I went into literature and studied literature and did my graduate work in literature. And then I taught 20th century literature at the university. I taught in, um, composition and literature in high school. And then I went over to the faculty of management and I taught uh, commerce and MBA students how to write. <laughs> and um, I see stories as, as fundamental. I think the world is made up of stories, not necessarily atoms. And I love the quotation by Margaret Atwood that we all end up as stories. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think of what my dad is no longer here, what my children and grandchildren know of him are the stories that we tell. So I have been involved with writing, teaching, editing stories for most of my professional life. Wow. So tell us more about this writing group that Lynn and Trevor are a group of. How did that form? Um, how it began was that um, I had been uh, writing or teaching uh, creative writing at McNally Robinson. They have a classroom there. And I've been going to um, yoga with Lynn for years. I don't know, 15, maybe, maybe more. And we were talking one day and she said how she'd like to write. And I was telling her about the writing course that I did through McNally's, but it was on a night when she taught yoga. So she came up with the idea, what about if I had a writing group around my dining room table? Would I be interested in maybe facilitating that? And I said, yes, yes, I would. So that's how it started. And she um, gathered people around her table um, and we started. And I think this is either our fifth or sixth year. Lynn, do you know? <laughs> I'm to it, say five. What do you yeah. say, Trevor? <laughs> right. Anyway, so this group got together and it's like, uh, I don't know, the universe meant uh, for all of the people to be together because they are a wonderful group. They're supportive, they're creative, they're fun. And every year we think, okay, is that it? But we always say, <laughs> no, let's have another year. And of course, with COVID, we haven't been able to gather around Lynn's mm -hmm. table, but we've been able to do it on Zoom. And what happens is I give them a prompt. I uh, gives them a little nudge towards storytelling and then they write their stories and when we meet each person reads what he or she has written 
and the rest of us uh, comment on it. And our comments are to uh, support the writer, tell him or her what we liked about the story, what stood out for us. And then if we're going to offer suggestions, we offer what I call next steps, which is what could I do if I wanted to expand this story or write more? And we'd say, well, what about that character that you mentioned? And often the stories are not fictional. The stories are personal. A lot of people like to write about their lives. and We call that memoir. So a lot of a lot of the stories are personal. And when we ask questions, it might just open that up for the writer. And the writer thinks, aha, that's how I can go on. Or we say something like that story's got to get out there, as we just said to Lynn about a story that she wrote about the bombers. And there is a whole community of people now who have read her story and loved it. So that's that's the function of the writing group is to support and encourage and to listen to the stories that have been written. I'm just gonna quickly ask you uh, Marjorie, now five years of having this incredible group, how have you seen the people grow? And in your own opinion, is writing a dying art form or is it flourishing now? And maybe possibly because of the pandemic and isolation. Right. I think it's flourishing. I, I think it, and certainly the pandemic is one thing that has caused it, but uh, I think we're all storytellers and, and our lives are made up of stories. And um, so a lot of people find release in storytelling, not just creative release, but sometimes release from pain if they've had an experience that's been painful. And uh, one way I think of writing about pain that we've had in life is that um, in creative writing, we turn, we transform pain into art, which is the story. And I can't think of anything more life affirming than that. So there certainly has been um, an extra need to affirm uh, life during this pandemic. So it's, um, and I have seen the change. Yes, I have. I can talk specifically about the two people who you'll be talking to. Whereas Lynn, um, when she started writing, she was experiencing um, a husband who was dealing with Alzheimer's. So she wrote about her experience. But what she discovered and what we recognized in the group is she is an amazing storyteller. She knows exactly how to tell a story and how to lead the readers in. So I've watched her develop as a creative writer. And it's it's been amazing. Now Trevor is is unique in that everything that Trevor says and everything that he writes we love. Because he's he's wise and he's creative. And what we've seen in this group of of supportive females that he's come in, that he has opened up more and more about his personal life. He has trusted us to hear what he has to say and trusted us to comment in a way that's constructive. So he he's just a fantastic writer. He knows how to write and he knows um, how to reach an audience. And the development that I've seen is what he has allowed himself to write about and that has just grown and grown. So yes, there's development in, in you know, writing uh, is, is, a, is a skill. And the more we do of it, oh. the more we learn. Well, you know what? Uh, we're gonna open up this discussion very shortly. We're gonna take a short ba break. And when we come back, we'll find out what Lynn and Trevor have been writing and what they love and have a passion for. And Marjorie too, we'll be talking about maybe the top five things that you can think about if you're willing to let your story be told. So don't go away, this is Hugh at Home.
we're back. The city's hottest event is happening on Saturday, April 23rd at the beautiful downtown Metropolitan Entertainment Center. It is the fifth annual Winnipeg Nightlife and Lifestyle Awards. This year we're changing it up. We're going to recognize and honor all those who have pivoted, made a difference, supported others, and above all, found success during the pandemic. Go to the website wnla.ca and nominate now. Nominations close February 21st and then the voting begins. Who's going to win? Well, we'll soon find out and we'll see you at the show. Welcome back to Hue at Home. It's how to write a story or you know what? Just putting your feelings down on paper. And once again, I have Marjorie, Lynn, and Trevor. Welcome to the conversation. Marjorie gave us a little insight into both of you, uh, a lovely introduction. So as always, ladies first. Sorry, Trevor. <laughs> but uh, Lynn, I know that you and I have a past and a relationship and uh, with you and your husband, Gene, too, as well, and his battle with Alzheimer's. Uh, but let's go right to this little short story that actually Marjorie sent to me. And, you know, it was like she said, sometimes people just need a little nudge. And uh, for those of those out there that don't know the story, maybe just give a brief synopsis of this wonderful piece that you wrote, Lynn. Yeah, thanks, Tracy. Um, well, this particular story that you're talking about is, uh, is a football story uh, because my husband was a um, professional football player, played most of his career with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And, um, and I'm still a big fan of the Bombers. So, <laughs> yes. um, so I wrote this story. Uh, we were in, in the playoffs uh, this past fall and uh, it was it brought up uh, uh, nostalgia about a uh, very important game that my husband played uh, played in, uh, oh my gosh, it was almost 50 years ago, in 1972. Mm -hmm. So I, I was quite uh, caught up in, in the playoffs and so I, I went to this game and I wrote a story and because um, it was, uh, I, I had really, uh, I was, I had really remembered this particular situation, um, this particular game in 1972. So I wrote a story about it. <laughs> and um, the, my, unfortunately, I guess my husband's Alzheimer's um, in that, that we were dealing with the last number of years was um, brought on by, you know, uh, repetitive head trauma. So, um, so through his football career, uh, of course, we didn't know it at the time, but you know, later, later on, he, he was suffering from the results of that. So it was really important for me to go back and write, write this story. I was very emotionally involved in it, and, and, uh, and I was very happy that the Bombers won the game and, <laughs> and, and turned, turned the, uh, made it into a happy situation. So, but mainly, mainly um, my writing um, has been, most of my writing has been around uh, our journey through, together through Alzheimer's, you know. And, uh, and we have spoken to you about how it has helped you in, in your journey to move forward. Uh, I'm going to quickly go to Marjorie because Marjorie, you did a little bit of editing on Lynn's short story. So let's talk about what you did in that edit, and was it and is it hard, or is, does that teacher hat come on and you go, okay, take that out, take that out, you know, regardless that this is you know Lynn's personal, you know, experience. Well, um, uh, there is a quotation by somebody who's wise, and I don't remember the name, <laughs> who said that the best writing is in revising. And of course, uh, anything that we write, it's we can polish. It's like playing a piece of music. First time you play it, uh, then you play it again and again, and you polish it. So as an editor, um, I look at the story from the reader's point of view. And that's harder for the writer because the writer needs to write 
what she or he knows or needs to write. And then the editing eyes are those eyes that say, what does the reader need? And so in revising, you, you shape a story according to what the reader needs. And of course, I have that perspective. Mm -hmm. I don't have the perspective of the writer, but I have the perspective of the reader. So sometimes I will say, um, we need a different word here, or this isn't clear, can you, can you shape it? Or uh, this detail could come out because it's not essential for the reader. So just little things like that. And if I remember about the story that Lynn gave, there were very few things that I, mm -hmm. that I had to comment on because usually when she comes to us with the story, it's already polished she because of her sense as a storyteller but those edit uh, those extra eyes that an editor brings to a story is what is between the writer and the reader uh it's where the editor keeps in mind what the writer needs mm -hmm. to hear or or read yes and I guess, Trevor, you've had several edits done, but uh, like Marjorie says, everybody loves your writing. So, yeah, where do you go from there, Trevor? <laughs> How do you top the next story? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I still think they're just being really nice half the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so let's get into your right. story, what you like to write about, what you've currently written. Well... I find that, um, like, I like that Marjorie said earlier that, like, life is really about stories and we're always kind of telling ourselves stories about what's going on, about our past, about our future, about the relationships that we have. And I think what this writing group's done for me is it's let me explore my own stories more. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that sometimes we frame certain things a certain way at a certain time for a certain reason in our lives. And that the more you write and the more that you let your stories come out, the deeper you can get into your own story. And there's a real like truth and peace and like an, almost an entertainment value to that because I think that we're all struggling through this life in our own way, through our own things. And so the more we can share what we're truly feeling and going through, I think the more we listen to one another because it's just, it's real, mm -hmm. you know, it's not a, yeah, that's the best way I could describe it. So I, I try and write about what's just real in my life and in my experience and what I'm thinking about or worrying about or trying to figure out about myself and it. And the beautiful thing about Marjorie's prompts is it kind of gives you a, a, like a focusing spot for that. Like it, it's like a funnel. So whatever I'm, whatever I'm going through or thinking or feeling or trying the ways I'm trying to grow, she'll give me a prompt and that just sort of funnels those feel I'll funnel those feelings through that prompt and it gives me something tangible that I can write about mm -hmm. and yeah what comes out comes out it's a uh, it's an interesting it's an interesting and uncertain and unnerving process <laughs> uh, because oftentimes what's coming out is something that's come out maybe for the first time well and that can be kind of scary that's wearing like your heart on your sleeve so to speak Trevor how did you get involved with the writing group and know that you could write well, uh, Lynn's daughter, Corey, uh, came and did a, a yoga piece at the school that I worked at, and I got into it, so I followed her to yoga at St. Mark's, where mm -hmm. I did practice yoga there for a while, me and my wife did. And then we saw one day, uh, my wife Megan saw on the bulletin board a sign up for the class, and she said, Trevor, you like to write, like, you should do this. So yeah, I signed up, I didn't really know anybody, and uh, yeah, the rest is history after that. Wow. So you mentioned that you like to write about what you're going through, personal experiences. So what stories or story really resonates with you that you could share with us? Well, I, I got one. Um, I picked one story about my daughter, Charlie. Um, it was us at the fair. This had been almost three years ago now. Uh, and it's, it was just a moment as a father <laughs> where you kind of realize... <laughs> Uh, it can be scary to be a dad too. Wow. No, I, all those feelings are so new. And so let's get all three of you in this conversation. 
uh, through the pandemic, through this isolation and Zoom, and Trevor, you said that, yeah, you were a teacher and everything like that with your students and going through that whole experience. How has this affected your writing? Lynn. Well, I, I suppose it's given more time for writing. And it's, you know, I mean, we're at home and it's, it's a great creative outlet. Um, I was just looking through uh, some of my stories this morning, actually, and I, I came across um, a story that I wrote um, about, it was called At the Window. So it was, I wrote about, you know, during COVID when my husband was in uh, Riverview Hospital, um, Riverview Care Home, uh, what, what that window visit was like and how bizarre and strange and surreal and, you know, I mean, I, 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 it was quite emotional rereading that story this morning and trying to understand still um, what he would have made of it all. You know, it was just so, it's been such a challenging time. And for us in particular, you know, having him go into long-term care during COVID, it was, it was, um, it was really challenging. So to be able to write during this time of COVID um, and mainly I've been writing about my experiences uh, with Jean through, through this time. And it's like, it really helped. It really helped me. And, and I'm, I was reading through my stories this morning. I'd kind of forgotten and I thought, wow, like the writing was very therapeutic at the time to, to like get it out. And I was reading it this morning and I thought, wow, that was so honest. I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to write mm -hmm. um, during this time, you know, because a lot of it was, um, I mean, you just forget as time goes by, right? So. Right. No, no doubt. So obviously, you know, that is been sort of a positive for you, Trevor, has it been sort of like that for you? And I'm, I'm kind of curious now, now that you've mentioned you have a daughter and you did that piece on being a father and you like to write about things, your personal experiences, do you kind of see this as a memoir at, at maybe one day you can give to Charlie? <laughs> like, you, you know, it's kind of interesting, right? Because gosh, I don't have that of my own mom. She's passed on, but boy, would I ever love to read you know, stories of how she felt raising myself and my brother. It's kind of cool. It is. It is. And I completely view it that way. Um, it's one thing, that, the one piece of advice that I took on becoming a father was to, like, make sure that I was uh, enjoying the present moment as they grew up because it can be hectic and crazy, but you don't get that time back. And even just, like, before this interview, just kind of reading over some of my pieces, when I read this one, you just, you it's amazing what writing can do. Like Lynn said, it can pull you right back into that moment. And you remember just how like strong those feelings were and how special and how scary. And it lets you uh, relive these pieces. One thing that I do with my kiddos is uh, I've got also a son uh, at the, I try and write them letters. I actually write them in email. I, I set them up with email accounts. And about once a year, I try and write them in a letter about what the year looked like and what I'm seeing in them because I just, I know what writing can capture. It's like it's like a snapshot of reality at that time, and for them to have that gift, like you were saying, Tracy, like I think that's I think there's a lot of value in that. And I, I myself too be so interested to hear, like what my parents were going through when I was younger, what I was like when I was younger. Like writing, it really, I think it just reinforces the idea of Marjorie said that like reality is story, and when you capture that story, you really do capture so much, or at least everything that seemed to be important at that time. Oh, no doubt. And Marjorie, it kind of comes full circle telling the stories and you had the luxury and I think we a lot of us do too of story time at bedtime and, and sharing those stories. Um, so like I had kind of teased at the beginning of the show, the top five or you know maybe it's one or two pointers uh, that all three of you can join in in this, um, I guess the top things that you need to know if you have it in you to write or can anybody write marjorie i think anybody can write for sure uh, that, that is that is true and they can um 
they can gain skills just by doing, you know, the 10,000 hours or whatever it is. But it's, it's amazing how easily stories come to us. And when I, when I work with people who come out and say, I think I want to write a story, you know, sometimes there can be a lot of tentativeness about that. Because if you're writing personal stories, it's like taking a parcel of your flesh and holding it out. Or I always say it's like holding out a newborn baby and having someone like me, who is an editor, say, oh, I don't like the ear there. I want it back <laughs> a little bit. You know? So it, it, it's a hard thing. But in, in order to get people to write or people who can do this for themselves, it's just think um i want to tell you about and finish that statement and i think in that statement everybody will come up with a story they want to tell you about and it's important to write without the critic inside your head stopping you is the first time you write a story is just write it don't worry about where the punctuation is whatever that can come when you go over the story or you hand it to somebody else. Sometimes it's, it, you, can, you can smell something like cinnamon. Where does that take you? And it'll take you back to a story or a word. We do that when I offer prompts in the writing group. Sometimes I say, write a story where the word maybe is central or the word enough is central and there and we will get six different stories that are from entirely different points of view. Or sometimes I say, think of a scene, think of a scene that is very important to you, write up what that scene was like, and then uh, we call it the scene flip technique, and then come out of that scene and talk about the significance. So, um, or write about something that's very standard in everybody's life. Describe a kitchen. And when I've done that in a creative writing class, I find within the description of the kitchen uh, lurk all sorts of stories. Uh, for example, one woman wrote about these little kittens being in a basket uh, by the stove, by her grandmother's stove. But then as the story went on, the grandfather take, took those kittens, put them in a boot and dumped them in the local slough. So what the story was really about was her first experience of death. Mm -hmm. So stories beget stories beget stories. And um, uh, I say to people, put your pen on the paper and say, I want to tell you about and it'll, it'll flow. Wow. Words of wisdom. Okay. As soon as this is done, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I guess yeah. for you, for you, Lynn, I guess one, one tip from you and all of your stories and, and writing. What are you asking yes. me? Which was my favorite story? Or, or a tip, a tip to writing that you've learned. A tip, a tip to writing. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh my. Well, um, that's an interesting question um, because I would say from my own experience, uh, I've only been able to write about things that, that I have, that are really deeply meaningful to me. <laughs> and so with Marjorie's expertise and her guidance and her like seeming simplicity of um, prompts that she gives us, she they, they take us they're able to take uh, it's been able to get into the heart of really um something that maybe you never thought you'd write about but um it starts to it's very much a self-reflection process very much a contemplation process and and so um for me, that's, you know, I can't, I can't write about just uh, fiction or, or anything sort of frivolous or whatever. It has to be deeply, deeply heartfelt. And, um, and I think the writing helps me 
feel even more deeply. And that has been hugely important in, um, in healing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, so true. Well, thank you, Lynn. And finally, Trevor, through all of this, tips or tip. <laughs> I think um, for me, I, I think all of us have moments in time that seem to come up for us. They get, they get brought up by various things or they just we find ourselves circling back to those incidences or those moments or those wonderings. And I find that if you, it takes some courage because oftentimes I think probably at least half of those memories that stay with us are ones that we'd rather not have happened or are mm -hmm. confused about or scared about. But in there, there's a lot of gold, like writing gold, um, because it's stuck with you for a reason, I think, and that, and which means that you're going to be very much able to go back there and write about it. And in addition to that, when you get through it, you're going to not only show your reader that you can get through these tough things, which is something that our group, I think, does a really great job of. Um, you're also going to then, it's going to create like a fracture in the glass. And once you've kind of broken through once and allowed yourself to write about something that was meaningful once, you'll see that it spiders to other places. And that's going to lead you to so much more writing at that point. And uh, the reward, even if nobody reads that piece, there's a lot of reward in that. But even if no one reads it, you going back and putting that into word, being purposeful about what you want to address, there's... I can't explain the value of it, but I know that I think that that's one of the roots that's kept our group together through all of this is the value of the process. Um, mm -hmm. One technique Marjorie was really good at with us was having us write from like a persona standpoint or a character standpoint. And so instead of it being Trevor who went through this, it might be Marvin. And then I write about Marvin and just that one degree of separation, you'd be amazed at how much easier it is to go back to that place. And then mm -hmm. from there, all of a sudden, maybe Marvin becomes Trevor again, or maybe he stays Marvin and that's okay. Because it's about yeah. that story coming yeah. out at that point. And then from that, man, we, we all see ourselves in stories so often. And I think that the more real and the more true and the more honest we can get in these stories, the more not only honest we can be with ourselves, but we can be with each other because then we're seen by someone. Like Tracy, if you read one of my stories and you're like, oh, wow, I enjoyed this. I took value from this. Well, you're taking value in me. You're seeing me. And in a time where we're all so separated physically and politically and in every way, the, the value of us actually seeing, connecting with each other, I think is, I don't, I don't know that there's something more important right now. Oh, wow. Okay. So Trevor promise you can email me anytime one of your stories, because I truly would love to read one of them now. <laughs> <laughs> and Marjorie too and and Lynn keep on writing I just want to thank all of you for spending this time and and really it, it does you you shine a different light on on writing because it's glamorized in movies or whatever and you see the tormented writer locked in a attic room and it's a typewriter and you know this crazy deadline but no it's true it's about stories and it's about what's inside of you so thank you Marjorie Lynn and Trevor continue writing and I hope that we inspire some of you watching and listening because we are a podcast too as well to write mm -hmm. so thank you all of you and thank, thank you. you tracy thank you tracy thanks so much tracy okay my name is corey i'm the managing partner of the hive in winnipeg so the Hive is a climbing and fitness facility, so we're bouldering only, which means no ropes or harnesses. We use mats for protection. And with that, we set boulder problems on the wall where you're going to be climbing routes uh, that are different colors and encourage you to problem solve and kind of figure out how to move your body through space and gives you a bunch of different options to try of all abilities. It, it takes disciplined, uh, self-discipline to, to, to take on some of these feats, you know, uh, just looking around at the different walls. Or it's, 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 a, it's a lot of fun. I love it, like I'm still a beginner, but uh, it, like I, if, I could, if I had the time to get out here more often, I'd be here every, every night. Yeah, 
So climbing is great because it has a little bit of social, physical and mental aspects to it. So uh, that problem solving aspect is a big component to it's like a physical puzzle. Um, but it also creates like a bit of a social community where you're working with uh, the people nearby to figure out how to get through it. Uh, and it's great for your health uh, mentally and physically in that sense. Well, the four pillars of our business are climbing, education, health and wellness and community and those aspects all kind of come together to create like a five-star climbing experience uh, by working in that social, mental and physical realm to, to work together in that activity that's a little bit beyond that traditional fitness. I, I'd say if you're looking for a good time, um, if you're looking to, to challenge yourself or if you're looking to just hang out and, and be around uh, friends and family, um, it's, it's a very warm place to be and, and it, it can be exciting. We want to give a very special thank you to all of our guests on today's show and leave you with this question. If you had a chance to write a story, what would it be about? We want to know, so send us an email to hello at ilikeyou.com or message us on Facebook and Instagram at ilikeyou. But for now, stay safe and healthy and we'll see you next time on Hue at Home. <laughs>